Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. I am joined today by one of our local residents who has very strong ties to our community, Evan Brown. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Nice to see you again. Now, Evan and I met a few months ago. He was actually um, directing, acting. You wrote a play that was at the Norse Theater called The Strand. Uh -huh. And we're going to talk about that. But I kind of want to back up a little bit because in our conversations, we found out that your parents were one of the founding families at Cornerstone Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And we just did their anniversary program there which was pretty amazing 20 years yeah 20 years so you were one of the first kids to actually go to that school talk about that because they've got such a unique curriculum with the parents actually being in the classrooms with the kids uh-huh yeah um, it was uh it was it was a great experience I was there from it used to be just all fields you know I mean I remember when the, yeah. the sandbox was put in and uh, Fred London who's now the, the principal at Dapple Gray was uh, mm -hmm. the principal there and the first DK teacher and I went uh, DK all the way through fifth grade there and uh, was the first class to graduate all the way through from end to end, so to speak. And uh, my father was one of the first uh, music teachers there as well. And, and still there today, and I still hear. there today, yep. yeah, actually today, <laughs> teaching right now. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a huge part of our lives and, you know, it was a huge part of my life and, and growing up and becoming who I am today. So most of my best friends are all from Cornerstone. and in touch with a lot of those people so it, you know it's cool because I think that you have that family atmosphere versus not really that that stringent school atmosphere uh -huh. but your parents are helping you out you know they get to know your friends and it is more of a family yeah and it's much more of a family and it, you know I think even in terms of you know having questions on you know things within the classroom it was there's always someone else there to answer a question you exactly. don't have to wait for the teacher and you know you'd have parents who are you know really smart engineers who could that help with math and it was just you know all those things where you just have the confidence to be able to ask questions mm -hmm. be able to you know talk to people and, and talk to adults and have rapport with them and um, yeah it was a it was a great experience and then I guess one of your handprints is still there so peace yeah. will be there forever yeah, peace, uh, Tell peace us about me that. will be there forever there's a there's that plaque that's out in front of yeah. the office by the multi between the multi-purpose room and the in the out main office there and all the, I think it's like the original kids of the DK and kindergarten oh, cool. are all in there in cement. And so my, my hand is there with my little name carved in into the well, cement. And so. I, think, I think someday your hands and your feet might be somewhere else in Hollywood a little bit more famous uh, I don't than know. that. Well, I don't know. Great, we're we're going to see. We'll see. Let's talk about your dad. I know your dad has been in the music business, and I know your sister and you, and you are kind of now, your whole family has been bitten by this bug, or maybe yeah. it was just in your genes. Yeah, but maybe. Tell us about your dad, where he came from, and how he got involved in music. So uh, my, my dad's actually from the Bay Area, okay. um, born and raised in Malpitas, California, mm -hmm. and, and moved down to the Los Angeles area in the early 70s. I think he moved into the South Bay in Manhattan Beach in right. about 73, 74, and started playing at Orville and Wilbur's and Beach Bum Burt's, you know, all those all the the clubs hangouts, back then, the hangouts sure. back in the day. And yep. um, and yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I mean, it's pretty much, pretty much my idol. I've just grown up looking up to him and wanting to be him in, in so many ways. So I think that's why I'm bit by that bug, as you said, you know, and um, it's, I don't know, it's hard once you get going with it and you, you know, learn to be able to express yourself that way and be able to emote that way in yeah. a lot of ways and just have a voice, you know, artistically, it's, it's, uh, it's just so rewarding, you know, even if it doesn't get out to be anything bigger, it's just still just great. You well, know, do, you, so. do you think that your parents knew that you were heading in this direction? <laughs> I, I think they had a feeling. They have, they have videos of me when I was a toddler, like singing Batman with my little like tape deck <laughs> and a little microphone thing. And I mean, I, they've fostered everything from the time I was, you know, wanting my first guitar that, you know, I got a ukulele, started playing ukulele first and they got me into lessons and, uh, you know, was always singing and, you know, kind of writing little songs as a kid and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just been a part of my life as long as I can remember. You know, what I think is interesting about you is that you are not afraid to try multiple, to have multiple talents. I mean, some people are just actors, some people are just dancers, some people are just singers and you're sort of embracing that you you wrote this play that was at the Norris I co wrote a lot co -wrote of it, it. Yeah. okay but still it, mainly I mean, written by my mom's it was but, right your mom yeah. okay another yeah. talented part of this brown family yeah. amazing yeah she's pretty amazing and did you ever were you ever afraid to embrace all of this and say I need to just pick one thing to be really good or I'm gonna get really good at all of it you know um being my, my parents uh, founded and operate Fantasia Family Music, which is what Cornerstone has a contract with, um, and 
they founded it largely out of things they had done at Cornerstone and saw that really worked and how this was fostering a certain creative growth and things like that with not just me but with other kids and right. um, and so with that, you know, they really wanted to do performing arts. And it was very music based, being that my father was a musician, mm -hmm. but it was also very built on, you know, building confidence in, in um, young people and that, you know, having to speak in public and get, get on the stage and keep your feet forward and, you know, face the audience and be able to address people that way. Um, and so it kind of just came naturally, I, you know, I'll okay. say a little bit, but I, I think too, as the more I've research into art and you know read more and meet more people and stuff I you know I, I think that art is so big it is, you know it's and, true. and it's there's so many ways that you can express yourself and there's so many ways to be a quote artist and you know as much as music is my, my first love and my passion I mean um, you know like a cornerstone I, I played Wilbur and you know in Charlotte's Web in third grade so there you go. It, uh, yeah <laughs> so it, it's just it's kind of been there forever and it's just another way to to express and I think another way to connect to an audience which is I think is so addicting about live performance and, and theater and, and music you know and their similarities in that sense you know so. Let, let's talk a little bit about the strand because uh -huh. it was an amazing it, it's an amazing thought to think that one area affects people so much yeah. in the South Bay and a lot of people don't really know about the South Bay I think there's there's little things if you've lived here all your life but let's talk about the strand and what sort of inspired you to work on this with your mom well, um, you know, the city, yeah, like you said, the South Bay is just such a unique place. It and is. in California, I mean, it, uh, as a whole, it's unique. In Los Angeles County, it's amazingly unique. And this niche place that's, you know, f further away from the freeway than probably any other place in Los Angeles. And um, it does have a history and a, and a culture that has been, you know, bred here. And, and that, uh, and I can say that I'm, I'm part of that, you know. And, um, you know, it's a surf culture, but it's also, a, you know, a commerce culture. And, you know, Redondo Beach what, had a harbor back in the turn of the century that was the biggest port in Los Angeles. This was before, you know, the port of Los Angeles that we know today and the wow. San Pedro Long Beach was, was built. So, you know, Santa Monica Bay is, is an integral part to this place being as big, you know, and um, fluent in a lot of ways that it is. So, um, yeah, so that was, I mean, that's part of it. It's just part of that history that you're talking about. And then the other part of it is that, you know, I think that, like you were saying, that people do kind of um, not really know 100% the history of why we live here and what makes this place so special, and it's just this this other great place that we've all been able to be a part of. But um, we wanted to bring it from an avenue that everyone could kind of relate to, and that you know we're surrounded by this ocean on this peninsula pretty much, and you know it's a big part of our lives and, and who we are. A lot of people surf or fish or sail or just like to walk on the beach, even hang out at the beach, and and that's uh, I think a big part of you know who I am and I've, it, as I went away to college and grew up a little bit and stuff like that and had to figure out who I was a little bit more it's funny how much the ocean and this place has defined who I am and, and so Strand was a way for us to um, I don't know let people let people remember of, of you know why this place is the way it is and why they are who they are because of it in that sense you know and it's brought in the surfing element and um, you know passion and you know for just the ocean and this whole kind of contradictory lifestyle between people that are you know very very wealthy and a very you know to do thing and, and then also people that are you know not as wealthy and but that still have this common ground which is the ocean and is this place that we love you know so Evan what was it like for you to wear that many hats in a production and what was it like actually experiencing the whole thing uh, it was uh, so great I mean it was uh, a blessing and an amazing opportunity to be able to work in so many avenues of the production and then also to be a part of it too was just was a joy but uh it was hard you know yeah. it was definitely it was uh, wearing a lot of hats um and uh it was just really fun though to be i don't know i guess i'm a control freak or something but just to be in control or just to be you know in the midst of everything so much um and to really go like you know all right well let's make this costume decision here and like you know what let's make this chorus twice as long so that we can really you know sell this out and we can add this extra piece of choreography in and and then to be able to um you know work with my scene partners the people i had you know big scenes with sure. as an actor and then kind of step back and you know, be like, all right, well, that was, I thought that was great. What do you think? And really have more of a collaborative process than maybe would typically be, you know, the case with theater. And, um, so that, you didn't you know. sleep for like three months? Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> not much. It was, it, was, it was a lack of sleep that went on. But it was, uh, you know, it was worth it, I think. 
Absolutely. Large in part. So. Abner, is that something you want to continue doing as far as... I'd love to continue to direct. I mean, acting is fantastic, too. And um, directing, though, is, is just really cool because I think you get to... It's, it's like composing music in a lot of ways, you know, writing songs. and that yep. You get to pick the pieces that, you know, stand out. And, you know, even if you don't want certain things to come out in your play, because directing is so personal that you don't even know it subconsciously as a director that this, this little piece is really going to come out like, right. like how I think it, and as opposed to maybe I shouldn't have it come out that way, but just because it's such an extension of who you are as a person, you know, your, your theater piece. You know, yeah, that's, of course. As a director. But, what, what, was it, what was the audience reaction like? What was that like? Well, that's always great. I mean, yeah. I think it's the, the best thing about, about theater in general and in, in live music and just live anything, you know, is that you can connect, and, you know, connecting with an audience is, um, I mean, that's why I perform, yeah. without a doubt. You know, so it was, they were a great energy crowd. They loved, you know, loved everything. And a lot of, you know, close friends and family members who were just, you know, at every show and were bringing, you know, more and more people each time. And, um, and it was a great crowd. I mean, they, you know, to the point where, you know, they'd clap during songs in a musical and, you know, and stuff like that, which is typically not done, but it was just, right. we wanted that. I mean, I think that's, the play is very, it's about this community. And so we wanted a communal experience too, in that sense. For people that don't live in the South Bay or aren't from the South Bay, what do you think is that thing that makes this special, that people stay together here, they've known each other for a long time. You said that you've got friends that you grew up with that you're still really close with. Mm -hmm. What do you think that close-knit, where do you think that comes from? You know, I mean, I think it starts, uh, starts with our, our families that we have here in the community that has uh, been built generations ago, you mm -hmm. know, from, right. from the first, you know, people that really moved to the hill that, you know, there's still families that have lived here that long that are here. And, Your grandparents um, still live here, is that yeah, right? Yeah, my grandmother yeah. still lives on Via Zumaya, um, and, uh, you know, she lived all over PV, and, and it's uh, it's that, just that type of place, you know. I think, uh, you know, when you <laughs> you look outside here and, and you yeah. go, you know, take a dip in the water or go, you know, sit down on the beach and, you know, or even go hike around the trails, whatever. I mean, it's, it's just so unique. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're in the middle of like one of the biggest urban, urban conglomerates in the world, and you're at this unique little corner of, of, of all of that, I think is really what makes it special, you know? And then it keeps everyone around here because I think people see the value in it and wanna protect it, you know, even mm -hmm. subconsciously. And right. so they, they bring their families up here and stuff like that, because it ensures that. And it's funny because we're at the Interpretive Center today and you uh -huh. said that when you were a kid you used to come here a lot. And yeah. there's people, you always see people walking around yep. and just enjoying the facility. Yeah, I mean, and because, and I mean, that's the thing about this, play, this place too. I think that people are involved in the community. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that's one of the biggest things too, that people keep coming back here. Because it's not like, you know, not to diss any other cities or anything right. like that, but it's not like, you know, any other place to where like, oh, like we have our, you know, Starbucks on the corner and this and that. And we have, you know, more of that, that mom and pop thing and that mm -hmm. real community where people are going to go out and, and investigate and be a part of this whole communal experience, you right. know, so, Can't yeah. Wait. Going back to your music, I want to talk about that because on top of all this other great stuff that you've done in, in the entertainment business, you have just put out your first... CD. I did, yeah. Tell me about that. Um, it's called 220 Lincoln, uh, okay. and it's that's actually my address in San Luis Obispo, where um, I, I wrote all the songs in college there. Okay. Um, and it's only it's like a five song CD. It's an EP technically, and um, yeah, it's just it's you know little snippets of of who I am as a songwriter, you know, and a kind of a. It's, it's pretty broad in terms of the styling of it, but it's in a very small format, you know, so you get a big. Uh, Big look at, at who I am and, and what I do in a you know short amount of time, a little and twenty what, minute segment. What kind of music is it? You know, I'd say it's rock. You okay. know, genre wise, it's a, there's so many little sub genres and stuff like that. You know, and it's kind of got a you know a pop folk thing to it. Um, and there's you know some world influence with different you know rhythm instruments and kind of some reggae tracks in there and kind of stuff like that, which is kind of the South Bay. You know, a little bit of that sublime you know type type feel a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I've just so many influences that it's hard to yeah. categorize it, I guess. You know, a little bit, I'd say Ben Harper is the closest thing. Ben Harper, Jack Johnson, that type of yeah, and, that type you of know, thing. It's interesting, since your dad was a musician as well, uh -huh. I think that you've had a lot of really famous people around you your whole life. I've been lucky to know some great people, yeah. Tell us about that, because I think that, you know, people that are that talented, whether they're famous or not, I think that you get used to that, and it kind of helps you to cultivate your own natural talents. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. I mean, part of it, too, is, you know, everyone that I've been around with my dad's band, they all are um, just so supportive mm -hmm. and just so loving, too, that it's, you know, I... 
I never knew any better that you know right. that you know yeah. so part of it. But um, yeah, you know, I've uh, just some great people through my father. Um, people like uh, bass player for Delaney Bramlett, Delaney Bramlin and himself from Del um, Delaney Bonnie and Friends, which is an older band back in the day, and um, and uh, so you write with my dad a lot. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then people like the bass player for Dwight Yoakam and the um, piano player for the Eagles played actually on Strand and the band with us he played. Um, and the guitar player plays for Eric Burden and the mm -hmm. Animals right now. He actually played on my album. Wow. Um, and the bass player for Oingo Boingo actually mixed this album and played bass on it. Um, so yeah, so been been lucky to have some great contacts. I would but. say so, and you. Know, it seems like in the South Bay, there's so many musicians. We were joking about athletes living here, but yeah. I mean, the musicians are just—it's crazy. It is. It's you know, there's a lot of just amazing musicians around that you know, no one might know of, but there, and a lot of them are here in the South Bay, mm -hmm. and you know, and in LA, of course, is obviously the. Right. Entertainment capital of the world. I, so. I guess being inspired by the ocean isn't a bad thing either. Is not it? a bad <laughs> thing at all. Not a bad thing at all. And you know, it gets, we we're a little slower down here than the typical LA thing, which I think you know artists like. It's a little bit more of that mm -hmm. kickback, kickback hub of just you know being able to look at life through a more realistic lens yeah. than now, the rat race. Kind of a tough question to wrap up. I, I know you went to school in Central California. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself staying here in the South Bay? Maybe moving I mean, on or, or what? That's, or what? That is a tough question. Yeah. I, I'd love to stay in the South Bay. I mean, who wouldn't, right? right. And I think that it uh, offers so much in terms of just a place to live and a community. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it is tough. The cent Central California is gorgeous. And after living there for going on fi over five years now, it's been uh, it's becoming more of a part of me every day, I think, you know? So I could, I could see myself up there, but I mean, I think I'm definitely always going to have a connection to the South Bay. I mean, just the people that I know here that I know will never leave. And I don't think you your know. family's going anywhere. No, I don't think soon. they're going anywhere either. So <laughs> I'll be around, definitely. So well, Evan Brown, thank you so much for thank being you. with us today. Love having you here. And Great thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're going to leave you with a little music from Evan Brown, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula. <laughs>